Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to our next video in Unit 4, Solving Absolute Value Inequalities. I'm going to call this Part 1. The reason I'm going to call it Part 1 is because we know there are kind of two distinct types of inequalities. You either have the greater than situation or the greater than equal to, but then you also have less than. And I'm going to address those two different inequalities in two different videos. So if you notice in the examples today, we have all greater than greater than equal to, greater than equal to in our three examples. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I've actually, I'm gonna do these on a separate sheet of paper. You can write them right on here or on separate paper, it's up to you. Uh, here's the first one, this is example one. And we're going to do it algebraically first this time, and then we'll come back full circle to the TI-84 and check our answers like we did earlier in the unit. Okay, so let's just think about what this first example is saying. The absolute value of a number has to be greater than four, okay? So that means whatever I put in here for this x, its distance from zero has to be more than four away. It's distance from zero. Anything that goes in here just has to have a distance from zero that's more than four away. So immediately I'm kind of thinking of a number line, right? Like I'm thinking of a number line and here's zero. Okay, so I need numbers that are greater than four units away. So if I kind of put a four here, I know that all of my numbers kind of have to be like over there. And on the flip side, there is another set of numbers that are more than four away from zero, and they would be like there. Does that make sense? If I pick anything closer to zero, it just isn't gonna work. Like if I pick two, well two is two away from zero, and two is not bigger than four. It's not far enough away, it's gotta be more than four away. So really, I can pick any number so long as that number is less than negative four because that'll put me more than four away or those numbers have to be bigger than positive four. And as long as I do that, I should be good to go. Any number I pick that's bigger than four, anything down here is gonna work out. Because anything, I mean, I could pick 50, and 50 is greater than four because 50 is more than four away from zero. So this is the answer, guys. That's like kind of how easy it is. There's your answer to example one. Okay, let's look at the next one. Example two says, the absolute value of x must be greater than or equal to two. Okay, so whatever I put in here, whatever I put in here, its distance from zero must be more than or equal to two. So again, I'm kind of envisioning this number line up here, only now my edges are more like two or negative two. So I can be, to be more than or equal to two from zero, I could be like here and off, or I could be here and off. I have to be more than two away from zero or equal to two away from zero. So that's leaving me with a different solution, similar but different solution set because my edges are different. I'd have to say, uh, my solutions have to be less than or equal to negative two, or my solutions have to be greater than or equal to positive two. Now, are you, are you seeing some similarities here? Notice how we have x greater than four, x greater than or equal to two. They kind of mimic the original problem in a way. And then the other side, of course, you have to get to the other value of x that's like four away, which is the negative four. See how this is negative four, negative two? 
and then we go off and running the opposite direction of zero from those numbers so that we're further away. So you kind of start to see a little bit of a pattern emerging here in these uh, solutions. And then our third and final example here is the absolute value of x minus 4 greater than or equal to 3. So now these contents, now again, because now we're getting more stuff in here, I call that the contents of the absolute value. So the contents of the absolute value have to be more than or equal to 3 from 0. The contents of the absolute value have to be more than 3 away from 0 or equal to 3 away from 0. So we either have to be out, the contents have to be above 3 or equal to positive 3. They got to get over into the right of positive 3 to be more than that away from 0. Or they'd have to be down under negative three, less than or equal to negative three. Now again, look at, the, look at the pattern kind of emerging. See how we have the same sort of rhythm here with this coming down here? And then we just switch it with the negative three and we gotta get down below. So to be more than three away, we have to be above positive three or below negative three to stretch out beyond those threes. And then we just continue to solve. Now this isn't all the way done, we need x. So we're gonna add four to both sides, which is going to give me x has to be less than or equal to one. Or if we add four here, add four here, x would have to be greater than or equal to seven. So that would be our solution here. And you can check these, because this, this one's a little bit more complicated. If you're not sure of yourself or you just want an extra check, you can always check. So let's pick a number on both of these intervals. So let's think of a number less than or equal to one. Hmm, well we could use zero, or we could use a negative. How about we use negative five, what the heck? X is less a number that's less than or equal to one. Let's pick negative five. So to check it, we go all the way back to the original problem. So it would say the absolute value of negative five minus four is greater than or equal to three. Okay, let's keep working. This is negative nine. And so how far away from zero is the number negative nine? Well, it's nine away. And nine is greater than or equal to three. So that's great. That's true. Now let's go over here. Let's pick a number greater than or equal to seven. I don't know. There's lots of them. Uh, maybe we pick 10. So the, and again, I put it back here, the absolute value of 10 minus four greater than or equal to three. 10 minus four is six. Six is six away from zero. So six is greater than or equal to three. That's a true statement. So basically guys, anything on either of these intervals is going to make this true. If you pick something that's not, maybe something between one and seven, it just isn't gonna work. So there you have it. So have a go at, oh, before, before we go, I'm sorry, I wanted to do one other thing. I just kind of wanted on this last example just to bring the visual in. If some of you are more visual, let's go back to our roots here. So if we take our calculator, you can do it with me or just watch, it's up to you. Let's go back to what we've been doing from the start with the original problem. Let's hit Y equals. If you look, I've got my left side in Y1, I've got my right side in Y2, and I'm gonna go ahead and graph. And that's what you've got. Now what's interesting is, whenever I wanna do, I don't care if it's an equation or an inequality, you always wanna find the edges. You wanna find the points where the left side equals the right side. So you wanna get these two points of intersection. So let's check that out. So if I do second trace, number five, intersect, enter, enter. Well, since my cursor's already over here, I might as well just click that guy. Usually I get the other one first, but I'll go ahead and click him. Okay, so he's seven, right? Seven, so 
if I'm if I'm kind of jotting this down here as a graph, I might draw something like it doesn't have to be perfect, but my V kind of does this. And then I come through here with my horizontal. So this guy right here is seven. Okay. Now let me get the other one. The other one is um, second trace, number five, enter, enter, and pull to the left. And enter. And there I'm getting X equals one. Now, if you think about this, that's no coincidence. Look at that graph already and look at the two answers I'm dealing with here, right? One in seven, coincidence? I think not. Now let's go back to think about this. Remember, your absolute value graphs are the V-shapes. So we're looking to see where the V-shape is, let's think of the word here, greater, above the horizontal line at y equals three. Where is the V shape above the horizontal? Well, let's look. I would have to say the V is above the horizontal here, here. Two very different separate intervals, hence the word or. You can't be these two places at once. You're here or you're here, plain and simple. So I'm thinking, if we look here with the seven, that red shading goes to the right of seven, hence the solution values of x greater than or equal to seven put me here. Or if you look at the one and where this shading is here, it's that direction with the one. So I'd have to say x is less than or equal to one. And those are the two intervals where the V sits above the horizontal. So it all kind of connects and comes together. Absolute value, it's not difficult, but you do have to just like, it makes you think a little bit harder when you're thinking through distance from zero because you always have two sides of the number line. Whenever you're dealing with absolute value and a distance, you know, of three, or more than three, you know, you're always going to be like you could be out here or out here. You always have like two sides of the story. And that's the thing about the number line. Having the positives and the negatives makes your absolute value have two distinct solutions, sets, I guess. All right, great. Good luck with the mastery. I'd love for you to do the mastery by hand, algebraically, and then to confirm your answers on the TI. Thanks for watching.